Hi everyone. I was watching the Post-Apocalyptic Archive. That's a YouTube channel, which is quite good. I highly recommend it. Anyway, I was watching one of his videos, and he showed a color detector for the LEGO Mindstorm. So I thought it might be fun to try making my own. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it in operation. All right, I turned off the light so it's easier to see the three LEDs. The first one here, the one that's on, is blue. The one in the middle is green, and the one on the outside here is red. So if I take a green object and place it near the color detector, the green LED comes on. And if I take a blue object, the blue LED comes on. And with a red object, the red LED comes on. Now, uh, I thought it might be fun to try using some organic stuff. So here's a tomato, and the red LED comes on. And here's some yogurt, and the blue LED does stay on there. And here is a leaf I found outside, and the green LED does come on. So it doesn't just work for your typical plastics and stuff, it does work on organic materials as well. Yeah, that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to go over how I built it and the theory behind its operation. Okay, so here's the basic setup. We have a tricolored LED, or a red, green, blue LED, and each of the cathodes of those LEDs are attached to I.O. pins so I can control when those are on or off. And over here we have a photoresistor. And that photoresistor is attached to a positive voltage and then on the other side it's attached to an ADC, an analog to digital converter, so we can see the difference of potential between these two resistors. So this resistance will change dependent upon how much light is on it. And next I'll show you a chart of how these things interact with one another so we can determine what color is reflecting the most. Okay, so this is how I set up my color detector. So first I turn on a blue LED and I measure the resistance of the photoresistor by way of the ADC and then I turn on the green, do the same measurement, and then I turn on the red and I do the same measurement. So whichever one has the highest uh, voltage, aka lowest resistance would be the one that is reflecting the most amount of light. So if it's a red object, one would think the red would be the most reflected light. And if it was a green object, green would be that little bump there. And if it was blue, it would be a bump there. And if it was a combination, then the bumps would be in combination. So there you go. Quite straightforward, quite simple. And the next step is the build, the best part. So where I got my red, green, blue LED was from a modern scanner head. So the part of the scanner which moves across the page and scans it, it uses a RGB LED. So you can see the LED right here. And now I need to desolder that. So now the LED is removed. Now I need to determine which pin is red, green, and blue. All right, I'm gonna use the component test on my oscilloscope just because it's faster, but you can achieve the same thing using your DC power supply and a, let's say, a 4.7K ohm resistor. So here we go. Put negative over here and test the positive on here so that's the blue so pin 2 is blue pin 3 is green and pin 4 is red all right so i've soldered some wires to the leads here so here you can see there's a blue wire a green wire and a red wire and this final pin here is my positive voltage so that's soldered as well to a white wire Okay, the next component we're going to need is a photoresistor, or you could use a phototransistor or anything like that, provided that it can see the entire spectrum of light. So, uh, I'm going to use a photoresistor just because that's what I have on hand, and if you don't have one, perhaps you have one of these outdoor solar lights. So, not all models have this photoresistor here, but that's where you would find it. So, these two models both have a photoresistor, which you can salvage. All right, at this point, I am calibrating each of the LEDs so they all put out the same amount of light, and I'm measuring that light level using that photoresistor.
Since there were so many cables on my bench, it was difficult to really show you how I was measuring the light amplitude and everything like that. So here's a schematic of how I did it. So here's the positive anode of the tricolored LED. So here's the blue, green, and red. So what I do is I connect one of the LEDs to this potentiometer here. And then I have this, this being the photoresistor, measuring the resistance or light level of said LED. And once I get a nice looking resistance on this meter here, I will go ahead and disconnect the LED from the potentiometer and then place a ohm meter across the potentiometer, record that resistance, and see if I can find a suitable resistor to match that. Uh, and then I would just, you know, go along and do the same thing for all of these. So each of these LEDs would have the same resistance value or light level across this meter here. And I would find suitable resistors for each of these LEDs. So there you go. The resistors I ended up using are R1 being the red resistor here is 4,000 ohms. R2 is 4,600 ohms and R3 is 620 ohms. Now you can see there's quite a difference between the first two resistors and the blue resistor. And the reason for that, I assume, is because this photoresistor does not see blue light very well. All right, this is a CDS photoresistor data sheet. The y-axis is the resistive sensitivity. So the higher it is, the more sensitive it is to that wavelength being the x-axis. So. Here we can see there are three different types of CDS sensors or photoresistors, and it looks like, from what I can determine, I have a CDS.SE. So it's right there, most sensitive to the green and the red, and not sensitive to the blue at all. So 400 would be blue, around 550 would be green, and 700 would be blue, or uh, red rather. So from this chart, you can see why I had to crank up the current through the blue LED in order for it to match both the red and the green. Also, you may choose to use a phototransistor instead of a photoresistor, just because I believe they have a more evenly distributed wavelength response. So now that I have the LEDs somewhat balanced as far as their light output in reference to the photoresistor, I had to mount them onto a piece of plastic so it was easier to program so they wouldn't move around too much and things would get all offset. So what I did was I took a CD case and just cut a black rectangle out of it and mounted the photoresistor in here and the tricolored LED right here. So they have a fixed position there. And the reason I cut it out in this rectangle shape was so I could mount it inside this old flash module for a film camera and it does fit perfectly in here so I just put that there and then I just snap on the top and that way I have a nice recessed area there so it's not influenced too much by the overhead light. Uh, one thing I failed to mention was what I used to hold the photoresistor this is actually designed for a five millimeter LED. It's called a chrome finished LED holder. So if you typed it in on Google, you should be able to find this right away. SparkFun has some. And as you probably noticed, I used an Arduino to program the color detector. I don't really want to show you the code just because it's really basic code and you can probably figure it out yourself. But I will post a link to that sketch and also the schematic that I have here. I'll make it in Fritzig so you can access that and build it yourself or hopefully modify my design because as you saw there were some hiccups here and there. Uh, for instance the blue light stayed on all the time but that's not always the case. That's just because it was reflecting off of the surface here. So I've tilted it up a little bit and you can see that both the red and the blue are alternating on and off. So that's typically what it looks like when there's no object in front of the sensor. I didn't program that in. That's just sort of how it balances out there. And in case you wanted to see the uh, front of this guy when it's on. So that's how it looks. Mostly blue, as I stated before. I had to crank up the amplitude of the blue light there. And yep, yeah, there we are. So you can find the sketch in the comments below. And you can also find the Fritzig schematic 
in the comments below as well. They'll be on the same blog post, actually. So, yep, I appreciate you guys watching, and if you have any additional questions, please let me know. And, and if you do make one yourself, I'd be really happy to see how you did it. So, take care.